Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to three short horror games. And it has been far too long since I've done one of these, and in fact, I was actually inspired to come back and do more by our first game of the night, Domovoy. Now this was actually sent to me in an email by the creator asking me to try it, and I immediately knew I had to, because it has a very original premise. Basically, we play as a Roomba. Yeah, seriously, one of those little vacuum cleaner robots, or I guess they're called Domovoy in this universe. And because we're a little robot, we go about our task cleaning up dust in a LiDAR point of view. And that's really interesting, because not only is it a very interesting perspective, and certainly a perspective that hasn't been done before, and we see like such a limited perspective because it's in LiDAR, I mean, while you're not home or asleep in bed, this thing's roaming about your house, processing all these images of things you don't see, and it doesn't understand. Well, let's find out what it saw. And W and S to move. Ah, oh, we can't actually look up and down. Being a Roomba, it only needs to see the ground level. Oh, so we're panning around this house like a periscope on a submarine. And periodically, our vision resets. That's the other thing about LiDAR, is that it's not a real-time field of view. We only see what's there at the time of the scan. So if we go over this, we can hear the things getting sucked up. Uh, we've got to continually scan, and we actually can't see anything while we're, while we're doing it. We can't move around. Right, let's uh, grab up all this dust. Ooh. See, for a second it took me a moment to realize that I was up against like a wall or something. And that's the thing with, like, incomplete information in your vision. It forces you to perceive something that would be just a normal house, presumably. But we see it in a way that we don't usually get to. From the perspective of a robot in terms of what it sees, but the perspective of a human in terms of trying to interpret the environment. Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised, I mean, somebody's probably working on it, but I'm surprised there hasn't been, like, a LiDAR horror movie yet. And all the while, we've got that eerie music from the menu playing throughout the house. Uh, it's almost like it has a certain level of respect for the humble life of the Roomba. And maybe I'm getting too philosophical too early. Okay, so it looks like we're in a living room of some kind. And they've dropped a whole bunch of cheese doodle balls on the ground. Don't worry, it's my job to clean up after your mess. Roombas have no needs. Or maybe we're gonna find out that Roombas do have needs that aren't attended to. Oh wow, this house is filthy. You hear that? Sounds like something came on over here. Now we're having to rely on senses that a Roomba wouldn't have. Uh, presumably they can't, like, detect audio, right? Alright, so in order to do that, we'll have to navigate our way around the corner? No, I think this is actually a dead end. But it sounds like it's coming from back where we came. Let's head back down that hallway. Unless maybe it's out and around this way? No, I don't think so. Let's grab as many dust balls as we can. Uh, see, that's creepy, because when that vision goes away, we as humans recognize it as a darkened hallway. It it's weird to be playing a horror game from the perspective of something that knows no fear. It seems like it's 
maybe gone away? I can't hear it anymore. Huh, that's weird. I mean, look, look directly in the middle, towards the top. It looks like we scanned something, like, in the distance. And just like that, those dots are gone. That's really weird. It's like we perceive something that should be outside of our range. Something just fell over. We've heard what sounded like maybe like a washing machine or a dryer going, and now a glass clattering over. Okay, that was hidden amongst the scan, but there may have also been very light footsteps. This looks like some kind of dining room. All right, 40% of the way there. What is this? Maybe some kind of kitchen? Maybe this is a counter? Oh yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Ooh, wait, ooh, hmm. There's a whole lot of something on the ground here. Maybe the results of that spill? Did I just bump over something? Uh, maybe, maybe the glass itself? Oh, this is so cool. We're like left to interpret the environment. And so it's able to present this horror story in a space that like just wouldn't normally be all that interesting or wouldn't be able to carry a whole game. Okay, we've looped our way back around. I'm starting to get a feel for this house. Uh, we left so much dust over here. I'm a bad Roomba. There's something solid on the ground here, it seems like. Oh, there's a whole back hallway back here. That looks like a coat rack. We must be nearing the front door then. Makes sense. You come in and around the corner is the living room. Starting to just faintly hear that music again. Somebody's knocking over more glasses, and I'm not happy about it. Oh, and tracking in so much dirt. I'm starting to feel like Rosie the robot from, uh, from what was it called? The Jetsons. Isn't George Jetson supposed to have been born in, like, 2022 or something like that? Okay, so these get updated, which is how we know that these are actually here. But our mission is not yet complete. Let's head back this way. And oof. For a second I thought I was scanning ahead there. But I don't know if all this was here before. This dining room table is filthy. Or at least the floor around it. Anything on the table itself is Mom's department. Huh. There's something else aside from these dust balls that we've been picking up. Oh, more over here. Perhaps plates on the ground? Yeah, that looks like it could be an overturned plate. Maybe a pizza slice? That looked like it was in the shape of a triangle. Is that music, like, not supposed to be playing? I mean, I get the impression that we're doing this either in the middle of the night or while the family isn't home. Do you hear that? Sounded like there was something else there. But it always happens, like, while I'm scanning, so I can't even be sure. Okay, that's... A lot of things. We're powerless to pick up some of this stuff. Okay, that's all that. 62% of the way complete. The music is playing from over here. This is a bathroom. I don't think we've yet been here. Wait, if we hadn't found this before, here's that washer and dryer that was going. Then maybe that door actually opened? 
But then again, all this is so hard to see that it's hard to tell. Uh, who is it? Uh, I don't think I'm allowed to answer the front door. I am but a little Roomba. More stuff on the ground over here. What happens if I do try to go to the door? All this stuff has been knocked over. more dirt has been tracked in. I think somebody's in the house. Uh, are we getting just like the most secondhand glimpse of like a home invasion? Well, <laughs> I got a job to do. I wasn't built to warn, I was built to vacuum. Yeah, this TV's been moved, but not taken. We could be... We could be witness to something far worse. So, because we're not seeing in real time, all we're able to do is make a note of changes in the environment. And actually, you know, this game has sort of a somber, like, tone to it. A scanner somber tone, if you will. Shattering. A trail leading this way. Definitely more on the ground now. A ah, whole bunch of dust bunnies in the corner of the bathroom. You thought I wouldn't find you. And that brings us to 90%. What else? It's like the counter is gone. And I'm starting to think there might actually be another hallway back here. One that we missed? There's there's something here that I can't detect on LiDAR. What could that possibly be? Oh, there's a whole lot more over here now. This is probably the last of it. Oh, wait. Is that a window over... Is that what we heard? Did someone break in through the window? There's definitely something weird going on here. We're casting it like a shadow. Oh, there's a staircase right here. They might have... They probably went upstairs or at least are standing right there, maybe contemplating it. They've been to the bathroom. More remnants on the ground in front of the shower. But I can't seem to pick them up. Where this place is getting sparser and sparser. What has happened to this house? This doesn't look like this doesn't look like anything we've seen thus far. Do you have some dust that needs cleaning? can't hear anything anymore. Okay, we got it. Oh my god. There was someone there, but now they're gone. 
they went into the kitchen. More shadows. More things tossed about. We can hardly get through. We still can't make our way upstairs. What about the dining room? Something more has happened here. There's someone crouched in the corner. Or... There was... <laughs> See, that's the thing, there's... There's this whole story unfolding all around us, but... We're seeing it from the perspective of something that just... Is only operating with like one one hundredth of the information. A story told in as few words as possible. Oh, there's something more in the kitchen now. And that music stops as I arrive. I'm starting to think maybe that music is meant to lead me in the direction of where the next mess is. More things overturned, it seems like. More going on in this front hallway. <sighs> See, the, part of the thing is, like, we're told that we're picking up dust bunnies, but clearly some of these messes are being made as we go, and we're just not... <laughs> We don't know what it is we're picking up. <laughs> Are you just making your way through? I almost feel like maybe there's two parties here, the invader and the one hiding from them. Um, that chair is floating. It is above the ground, and it's remaining there consistently. Everything has changed so much, I can't even tell where I am at a given time anymore. I th think this is the kitchen? Let's test that theory that the music leads us. Uh, this is, I think, the radio that it's coming from. And here we find ourselves in a, yet another extended hallway. Is there something following behind? but something's moving around. Oh, listen to that. door is now open. But what is that sound? That doesn't look good. Alright, let's pick 
this stuff up. Still got to do our job after all. Oh. Oh my god. And the game crash. Just Oh my god, that was that was something else. Hang on, I'm going to go back to the main menu so you can at least like have something with the commentary over it. At first, I thought that maybe it was like some kind of a home invasion seen from the perspective of an unfeeling robot. But then I started to think, well, maybe... Because we were only ever seeing that one figure. So I was starting to think, maybe we're here witnessing, like, some kind of mental breakdown. But whatever that was at the end there, like, some figure eating some larger figure, at least that's what it seemed like, and then something, like, appearing in our field of view right at the end there, I... I, I truly don't know what to think. All I can say is that that was a very original horror game, and honestly, it's one that is doing so many interesting things with limited information, with perspective, to create a story that is so open to interpretation. And what I liked about it the most, I think, was the mood. There was nothing except for that somber, in-universe music playing that almost made it feel like we were like a sort of innocent bystander to something really horrible happening that we just don't have the capacity to comprehend what we're in the middle of, just continuing to do our job while awful things occur all around us. But that was Domovoy. Very happy I played it. Thank you to the creator for sending it to me. And on to the next one. Next up is Mannequin, in which we play as an employee of a clothing store who is just closing up for the night. But presumably things aren't going to go that easily. Now, I downloaded this because it seems like a pretty basic idea on its face. However, it seemed from the screenshots and certainly from the ambiance on this menu that it's a simple idea executed well. And I think that that's one of the greatest strengths of indie horror games. Because, I mean, listen to the patter of the rain, the thunder outside, and those dull lights over the empty store except for those faceless mannequins. I feel like it's a workplace fear that so many retail workers can relate to, and I can't wait to see how it presents that. Well, this store isn't at all what I pictured. Um, excuse me, but it shouldn't matter if I bought these clothes three months ago. So curse you, and this store as well. <sighs> like I even care to make anyone happy. Go home, old lady. Oh, we're playing now. Okay, so first of all, that did not sound like an old lady. And second of all, wow, they really do aim to capture the authentic retail experience. Rude customers and depression. Now let's go see what it is we're trying to do. Do we need to take that key? We should probably remember that it's there, but listen to this. Look at this perspective. Oh, the thunder outside, barely able to see the mannequin heads over the tops of these racks. It's being tied to this one position that makes workplace horror so creepy, partly. Oh. Uh. I need to check the circuit in the back. Okay, this this went from 0 to 50 real quick. Let's see how fast it takes it up to 100. Wait. It's faint, but I feel like I can hear, like, maybe whispers or breathing somewhere? But it's hard to tell with all the ambient sounds. Oh, it's not running super well either. 
that's, uh, I was gonna say that's a really weird pose. From right here, I can see you're putting your hand on your hip, but from here, it almost looks like you're cowering. Okay, let's hug the walls and just trust you guys to not turn your heads on me as I walk past, right? What just happened? Um, um, wait, I don't even know. Were there doors there just now? Uh, luckily, we can pass right through these mannequins. Oh, yeah, wow, this is running fairly poorly. Not that it's running poorly, but it's, like, stuttery. Alright, now where's the circuit breaker? Okay, we can sprint, and... It all just leads down a narrow hallway. Great. This place was trying to be a liminal space even before it was cursed. Locked. So electric doors are out, too. I forgot the master key at the desk. Okay, good thing we made a note of that. What sense does it make to have the door to the circuit breaker room be electrical? And locks instead of opens in the event of power outage? Is that even legal? What if somebody was in there when the power went out? This is not the same as when I left and neither are you. Okay, so at least two is are unaccounted for, probably a lot more. Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? No, 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 I'm not doing this game of red light, green light tonight. So did she choose to have the curse present this way, or does the curse just kind of choose for itself? Anyway, I'll be taking that. And then probably barricading myself in there. Okay, so we need to be ready to whip around at a moment's notice, because I have no idea if you can kill me or not. So many of you are missing from where you came from. You know, I know that's supposed to be your hair, but it almost looks like you kind of have, like, a dumb caveman forehead. Okay, so you'll do that any time. You'll do that any old time, so we need to keep you within our line of sight. Wait, there's a... Dressing room right here! Ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. I guess we have to go back to the beginning. <laughs> All right. This got a little ridiculous. Well, this door isn't at all what I... All right. Well, if that's going to be the case... Oh, no. You're already doing this. I just didn't notice the first time you did it. Okay. We need to keep ourselves moving. It's linear now, but you're going to have a much easier time coming after me later on. Locked. So I right, now we head back. I forgot the master key at the desk. Okay, hearing that, like, creaky sound and catching you in that, like, red light, green light pose is a little bit spooky. I will give you that. But this whole thing does seem a bit buggy. Okay, grab the key. Now part of the question is, what actually constitutes keeping you within line of sight? We can't really know where you've gone. Unless... Uh, okay, so once we hear you, we've got, like, seconds to whip around. Not even. But having to navigate in reverse through a maze is not the easiest thing. You didn't even make any sounds that time. Oh, we need to get distance, but there's not really a way to do that. Oh my god. Okay, you move far too fast. But maybe we can do this now? Maybe? 
I mean, hopefully. I've never been a fan of these Weeping Angel type games. Checkpoint, please. Oh, it's not going to give me any checkpoints. There's that breaker. Right there. Nope, let's just go for the exit. How about that? How about we just go for the exit, then? Open up! Okay, so I suppose we're not doing that. And again, you seem to be inviting me? Oh, God. Oh, God. I can hear movement all over, but... Who? One of you... All of you? We really just keep this many mannequins, because this looks way larger than the space of the floor itself. Out of here we go. Exit, please. Yeah, that's what I figured. No? You just wanted to do a little trolling for a second? Okay, that's okay. Everybody does a little trolling sometimes. I didn't know this was going to be a backrooms game. What is this place? Oh, listen to that hum. It really is a backrooms game. Certainly backrooms inspired. Oh my god. Oh my god, you're moving in the dark. Okay, just run, 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 run. Uh, continue our retail job? No? Okay. Just a waypoint to distract me? I have to say, for as weird as the voice acting is, this, uh, this breathing is actually quite panic-inducing. Like, you can actually feel the fear. Keep on heading towards the exit. Oh no, oh no, keep going, 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 keep... Oh, you did more trolling. Am I gonna have to juke you? No, you're gone. This way now? Uh, no, through here, through here. Always go the different way. And... Out into the dressing rooms. Okay, that was kind of clever. At this point, I would be questioning my own sanity, but notably, not a single mannequin on this floor. <gasps> oh. oh, never mind. We've rectified the diversity situation. Thanks for playing. All right, so that was Mannequin. And it's a little rough, but you know what? For a short, like, five, ten minute experience, that was pretty good. I mean, it's like I said, it's presented well. It has all the right ideas. I personally am not a huge fan of, like, the Weeping Angels, like, back up through a maze from, like, a thing that, you know, blink and it kills you type deal. If anything, I wish it had had a little bit more build-up, you know? Like, if it were a full game, you could almost go chill as art having us work this ship, dealing with customers and stuff, until that moment. Just because I liked looking at the space so much. I mean, the way, like, it was so maze-like just by the nature of being a clothing store. Being able to see those mannequins' heads just, like, barely over the top of the aisles, thinking, like, is that one that I just passed? Like, is it exactly the way it was before? And then I do also have to praise this wherever I see it. The flashlight looked really nice in the way it interacted with the environment and the information that it reveals to the player. Which, so many games, I feel like they just project light from you. With this, it had a look, and it looked really good. Also, I do like the idea of, like, going off on that whole thing. Even if it is sort of cliche to end up in all these, like, hallways and stuff that weren't there before. I just like that twist of just coming out of the dressing rooms into a normal store. But, pretty short horror game. Hits in some areas, misses in others. On to the next. Oh, there's a contrasting image for you. A harvester in a wheat field surrounded by towering urban decay. 
And it's only as I realized that the sound of that thunder seemed to be rolling backwards that I realized that the rain appears to be doing so as well. Our final game of the night is Wheat Harvest Paradox. And it's got such a specific description that I can't even wrap my head around it from the description alone. Basically, the residents of the city are trapped in a time loop in which every day the direction of time changes. So it can go forward or back or even both at once. And I have no idea what that can look like in gameplay. Well, it's Farm Simulator with a horror twist. Let's check it out. One day, a meteorite fell into one of the poorest cities, which mixed two directions of time. This is the usual one that goes forward and reverse time. Because of this, a temporary chain was formed in which the direction of time changes every day. Well, I appreciate having me press space to continue instead of just moving on. That boom. I wonder if every time loop isn't from the moment of impact. But it's certainly... Ooh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, whoa. There's actually quite a lot of glide to that walk. Uh, hey there, chef. Good morning, combiner. Or rather, evening, because it's a reverse day. So they're aware of the loop and have presumably been in it for long enough to have established a new social order. I remind you that at the end of the day, you must exchange the wheat harvest for our currency. Wheat coin. Oh, okay, so we actually are working to make a living here. It really is Farm Simulator. A menu. Bread. Water but only on normal days. It's actually incredible how much world building there is on that simple note on the wall. Look. Oh, so much conveyed in so few images. We were poor to begin with, and this has just left us even more destitute. Oh, another reverse day. We're sure to survive. Yeah, well, that's another thing. If you die on a reverse day, or if you die on any day in a time loop for that matter, what happens? Oh, look at this. Time isn't the only thing being distorted. Or maybe they are somewhat physically held up, but... Uh, no, they're, they're definitely clipping into each other. It's distorted space as well as time. I wonder if space doesn't change day to day as well. Let's talk to some of these residents. Oh, we can't. Okay, well, let's get out there then and see if we can't find our harvester. Hmm. I managed to come up with a formula to charge my invention, which will break the time loop. Okay, all our funding into this, please. And time will be normal forever. True, I need a lot of wheat to make fuel for my invention from it. I hope you can collect so much wheat. I accept wheat in the form of coins. I'll exchange them with the chef later. We need 200,000. Okay. Oh, wow. Talk about putting a lot of weight on my job. Oh, that must be the tool. So, using biofuel, I guess, in order to power something which can oh, break us out of whatever this is. I mean, when people suggested I play this game, I was expecting Horror Farm Simulator, but I wasn't expecting something in such a unique world. Least of all, something that came from a 72-hour game jam. Hello. I'm a mechanic, and I take care of your combine. Remember, this field has a reversed copy of you and the combine. 
I can also upgrade your combine to harvest faster and better. Here you can take a look at the available upgrades. I work for weak coins. Oh my, this is much deeper than I was expecting. Alright, let's get in there. A reverse copy of me in the fields. And the current direction of time is backward. I am real curious to know how this is going to go, but... It seems the gameplay is more or less what I remember from my farm simulator addiction for a brief period in 2015. Let's get as much as we can. I imagine I'm going to be cutting a lot of this. Uh, oh. The field itself is, like, mirrored. Does that mean that I'm going to be, like, competing with a reverse self out here? Oh no, you're walking backwards. I hope you won't walk backwards into the field. On top of all of this, in this poor visibility, this dark, foggy space, the rain pouring down, and it's seemingly very little sunlight, although I guess something is coming from somewhere. Uh, I really don't need people walking around in here on top of everything. Oh wait, no. I think I can already guess how this is going to present. It's not doing anything because we haven't done anything yet. But tomorrow, tomorrow there may be another me out here. You know, much like Farm Simulator, I do have to say this is, like, actually somewhat relaxing. I mean, it's the atmospherics of it, looking out through the glass, the dirt on the windshield. It's like I'm safe in my little box with my headlights projecting in front of me, just doing my monotonous little task that helps everyone. Or maybe hurts them badly. We've yet to see the full extent of what this will do. See, the thing is, by doing really well today, does that mean I'm, like, screwing myself tomorrow? Uh, this is a scary thought, to say the least. Okay, 100%. I'm the greatest. Now, what do I do? We can press R to end the workday. And now we can talk to the chef and get coins. There we go. 188... or no, 18,000. Wow, this is going to be quite a slog. And now we can sleep. Uh, so today is a normal day. Let's see how that actually presents for us. We're a long way from there. And... There is no new field. So what do we, what do, we do then? We can buy upgrades. Okay, I'm thinking if we invest in ourselves early on, that's what's going to get us to the end the most quickly. So let's do that. And... okay. But it still wants a minimum of 40%. Oh! So, ooh, I see. So now I'm out there actually laying crop, essentially. That's crazy. So now, our, our best bet, the most efficient way, is going to be to actually follow you as you're spitting this stuff out. Meaning that as I upgrade myself, it actually gets kind of harder, but maybe I don't need to upgrade the steering and stuff. I think if I'm patient, I'll save money and get this done quicker by just kind of, like, following in my own footsteps. This is such a weird premise. That is so cool. Oh, looking at that mud-covered windshield and knowing that I'm the one staring back. <laughs> you know, it's really, really hard to ignore the theme of futility in all this. 
I like to imagine we just stare into each other's eyes all day while we're doing this. Although, we couldn't see ourselves yesterday. Which, hmm. A lot to think about in this scenario. I don't know if anybody's ever done, like, a time travel story like this. I mean, it's, I know it's not time travel, but lots of stories do time weirdness. This is something else. Uh, and... Ooh, we can even go over 100%. I wonder if we don't get more for that. I guess we'll see what happens. Huh, I mean, have we just found the infinite food sheet? Because if so, uh, I'll bring you your 200,000, but do we even want out of this? We can make bread free. Uh, I'm sorry, I gotta wipe the tears out of my eyes. Actually, wait, hang on. Hang on. Hang on, as we reach 176%, a horrifying thought occurs. Does this mean that there's basically like a relentless me following me around stealing my wheat tomorrow? Because if so, that's, uh, but I think we're running out soon anyway. I think we're reaching the outer edges of the field, which means that we're almost to the point where I started my work day yesterday, right? Yeah, I think that's going to end up being the case. Okay, once we reach 200, just because I'm curious, then we'll end it. There you go. Which means I am now doing this. With massive paths cleaved through it. Okay, there's 200. End work day. Uh, see, this is the kind of thing that seems simple at first, but then you realize it might take a bit for the actual ramifications to prevent to present themselves. And we can sell that for another 150,000. Okay, very, very good. We should have kept going. We're very close to paying that guy off. Sleep. Did it do that between loops the last time? And it's another reverse day. We don't need to increase... We don't need to increase anything. Let's keep our money and try to get through this. Because I have a feeling the more I do this, the more difficult it's going to get. Other me is out there. Oh, and there's more gaps in these fields. We need to grab at least a minimum of 40%. Knowing that I'm out there, it's actually, uh, it's almost like I'm in a tug of war with myself to not starve, which is quite a thing. I don't know how you even come up with something like this, let alone decide, yeah, I can make that game in three days. I haven't actually even seen myself. But the fields appear a bit more plentiful than when I started. Oh, it's me! Are you going? I think I might have just run someone over. I'm sorry, but you're moving in reverse and not actually getting anything. It's such a surreal and almost dreamlike state, isn't it? Like the kind of thing you might dream about and think, oh man, that is so deep and crazy. And then you wake up and you're like, that feels like it had to have meant something. But my waking brain just can't make any sense of it. Alright, but by my approximation, 100% should be more than enough to get our invention done. Or that guy's invention, funded by me. Which should mean that I get to name it, right? But it seems we have almost reached the end of what we need to do. 
I mean, realistically, we could probably end it right now, but I just can't leave it on a 99.1%. So let's do that and end our workday. And that should be enough unless there's more shenanigans afoot. Uh, we get 75,000, bring our total to 229,000. Let's do it. <laughs> and 29,000 for ourselves. Oh, and I guess a random goose was in attendance as well. The end. That's what has to happen. Due to the anomalous properties of this meteor, it's, it's not that the area has been stuck in a permanent time loop after the meteor strike. It's that we're doomed to be struck by the meteor over and over. That's that boom every other day. It's one of those things that it's sort of this repetitive task that is actually quite relaxing because of how moody it is. But you also spend that time really thinking about the situation that you're in. The bleakness is very much a part of it. There's a ray of hope. And really, in the end, we don't even find out if it worked or not, or even what working means. Because I don't know if this working means that we get to rejoin the rest of the world outside of the time loop, or if it just means our existence ends. And is that such a bad thing? Uh, it's just, it's a game that wants you to sit there and reflect, and I really appreciate it for that. And it's a fun ride along the way, even if that whole upgrade system did make me think it was going to take a lot longer than it did. Well, thank you for joining me for yet another edition of Three Short Horror Games. And if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try any of these games out for yourself, those links will also be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.